Hi, and welcome back to another Reaper tutorial. Today we're talking all about how you can record yourself better. And this is meant to be for people who've never used an audio interface before, who may be switching to Reaper for the first time. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to hook up an interface to work with Reaper, how to set levels, and how to find the best mic placement for your instrument. So let's get started. I wanted to show you how to set up your audio interface when you first get it. So this is probably not the one that you have, but it, they all have similar parts. So let's take a look at the back of this really quickly. So we have eight inputs on the back, and these can be XLR or quarter inch. We have a phone's uh, output and normal outputs, and then power, which is probably something that you don't have on yours. This is a particularly special uh, version that you can take remotely. On the front of this, you're going to have knobs uh, that will adjust the level, the gain, it might say. Uh, that's going to be something that we'll play with when we first plug in our microphones. Don't worry about this stuff. I wanted to show you a little bit about how to set up your interface for the first time when you get it. So let's first take a look at the parts of this close up. The interface itself will be plugged in using this USB cable, and it's going to go in on the side of the interface. The headphones will have a jack like this. This is called a quarter inch. It may look like this, but you'll want one of these if you're going to be using an audio interface. Some of them do not detach. This one does. So that goes in the back in the phone's input, which may be in a different place on your interface. The last thing we'll be plugging in is our XLR cable. So this end will go into the interface. The other end, which has holes in it, will go into your microphone and that plugs into the back in one of the mic inputs. A few helpful tips, when you are plugging in a microphone, you wanna make sure that your level knob is all the way down, or you could risk blowing out speakers if you have them. And if you're having trouble getting sound, sometimes there is a knob on your interface that will say something like this. So this knob will decide whether the sound is coming directly through the interface itself, so you'll be able to hear exactly what the interface hears or if it's going through your DAW, your digital audio workstation. And sometimes if this is turned one way or the other, you may not be able to hear things how you want them to. Last part of this is gonna be looking at your phone's volume. So sometimes there's a separate knob for the volume of your headphones. If that's turned down, you're just not gonna hear anything. So make sure that's up. Uh, I usually put it in the middle and that is usually fine. Once you have those things plugged in, I wanna show you how to set levels. So if you're using a condenser mic, you'll need to make sure that phantom power, which is sometimes labeled as 48V, is turned on. And you'll want to keep the gain knobs down when you turn this setting on, or you could damage your equipment. So now we're going to set levels. And setting levels properly is going to be really important for you when you're recording. So we really want to get this right from the first time. First thing to do is to make sure that you're recording through your audio interface. So up at the top right of the screen in Reaper, we could check our audio device settings and make sure our device is selected. You likely want to use ASIO as the audio system and then find your interface in the ASIO driver drop down menu. If that's all good, we're ready to add a track that we'll record to. So, first, you want to add a new track to Reaper, which is up here under Insert Track or Control T or Command T on Mac. Once this track is added, you're going to change the input to the input that you plugged in your microphone into your interface. Mine was input 5. Then you're going to click the red circle here to arm the track for recording. And I'm going to drag this up a little bit so I can see this meter better. We're looking for the level to average around negative 12 dB. So it should peak around negative 6 and it should rarely drop below negative 18. So if you're looking in here... I can zoom in a little bit, and you can see that as I'm talking, it's only peaking up at negative 6, averaging around negative 12, and rarely dropping between negative 18. And now what you want to do is turn your gain knob on your interface up about 75% of the way and begin testing your mic uh, using your instrument in playing position. And I'm going to demonstrate this with my roommate playing bassoon for us. Okay. <laughs> 
I'll show you what happens when you leave the level set too high and too low, but basically if the audio is too loud or too quiet, the person who's responsible for mixing it later is going to have to bring the level down or up to fit, and the sound's going to be distorted if it's too loud, and it's going to be really noisy with not a lot of sound in it if it's quiet. So here's what that sounds like. Once you have things set up, you can hit record to capture some audio that you can play back to make sure you have the microphone in a good place on your instrument. Uh, note that it's not going to sound like it normally does in a large performing space, and that's okay, because later on somebody's going to process it, putting EQ, compression, reverb, and stuff. And I want to show you what our original reference uh, track that Cameron played sounds like with those things added, just so you can hear eventually what your recorded track is going to sound like. As a session recording artist, you won't be responsible for adding these things. So if you can get a good, clean sound from your setup, the person receiving your files will be more than happy to work with that. And they're not going to expect you to be doing all the processing for them. Here's an example of me moving the microphone around the bassoon so you can hear how different things sound when they're re recorded in different locations. So in order to find the best placement, you're going to have to create and record enable your track and then follow these seven steps until you find a sound you're happy with. So you'll place the mic near your instrument, pointing at it, but not too close. Turn the gain knob up to about 75%. Play a test pattern that remains the same, which is like a scale or an excerpt. Something loud, something soft, and watch the levels to make sure they stay in that optimum range as much as possible. If the level's going above negative 12 dB, turn the gain knob down. If it's below negative 12 dB, turn it up. And very, very small amounts will go a long way in this case. And then you'll repeat steps three and four until you're hitting the optimum range. Next, you'll actually record your test pattern and see if the instrument's sounding how you want to. And you can do that by clicking the big red circle here in the transport is what we call it. And that'll start us recording things. You may have just seen a pop-up that you probably won't see on yours. But once it starts recording, you can see things tracking there. If the instrument is sounding strange, you can move the microphone and try another test pattern, but you might need to recalibrate the gain knob each time you do this, so it gets a little tedious. And mic placement is something you will likely change over time. My first recording sounded awful compared to the ones that I make now. And it's from uh, me watching videos of other people recording bassoon and just my own experimentation that they sound any better. So I hope this gets you on your way to recording yourself confidently using Reaper.